January 15th has officially passed, which means teams can now engage with other teams in regards to players that they recently signed to contract extensions or contracts. And it literally took less than a day for us to find out that another huge trade was just made. So before we get to the content, make sure you drop like, subscribe, and turn on our notifications to help the channel grow. We are so close to hitting the 900,000 subscriber mark. So if you guys consume the content, a subscription would mean a lot. And now that we get all of that out of the way, cue the intro. We made $1,100 off of a $20 entry on prize picks. And it wasn't just me, it was everyone that followed these picks on my Instagram story. And the best feeling is the amount of people that made money as a result of this. I mean, bam, bam, bam. Bam! My DMs were flooded, so the best part for me was seeing you guys make money as well. But we're not done yet. If you haven't signed up for prize picks, use my promo code microphone to double your deposit up until $100 on prize picks. And I give away my picks on a daily basis for free on my Instagram story and now my Snapchat story. We're having so much fun doing this. I'm so happy that I made you guys some money. And thank you, prize picks, for the sponsor. Mic check 1212. What's going on, everybody? The Toronto Raptors are in a fairly enviable position. As a team that won an NBA championship four years ago and currently have no prospects of competing this year, they have one goal and one goal in mind only, and that's maximizing their returns for their current assets. A few weeks ago, they did an okay job at that when they traded OG Anunoby, Malachi Flynn, and Precious Achua to the New York Knicks for RJ Barrett, Emmanuel Quickly, and New York's second round pick in 2024. Typically, you would expect a team to be priced prioritizing draft capital instead of young players like Emmanuel Quickly and RJ Barrett. In this particular instance, the Toronto Raptors elected for more valuable young talent to build around as they head into the future. And the reason why I said that they did an okay job at this is because the year prior, they were getting really big trade offers for OG Anunoby, trade offers that contained multiple first round picks. But since they waited a year and OG Anunoby's contract is set to expire this season, especially if he declines his 19 point $0.93 million player option, OG Anunoby's value took a slight hit. Now, ultimately, this trade worked out wonderfully for the New York Knicks, and it was the right move to make if you were the Toronto Raptors, because at this point, you were going to lose OG Anunoby for nothing. You see, the Toronto Raptors have a history of losing stars or really good players or assets for absolutely nothing. The first time I was willing to forgive them, Kawhi Leonard just won them an NBA championship, and then he dipped literally a week later to Los Angeles. There's really nothing you could have done about that. If you traded him at the deadline, then no championship for Toronto. But this past offseason, it happened again. Fred Van Vliet was able to just leave and go to Houston. And the Toronto Raptors literally got nothing in return. Now, it seemed like they were about to repeat the same exact mistake with OG Anunoby, who would have probably brought them significantly more in return if the Raptors dealt him significantly earlier. But once a player is clearly looking at leaving your franchise, and in OG Anunoby's case, he was probably going to leave within the next five months, then you lose all of your leverage. And now the Toronto Raptors were in a difficult position with arguably the best player on their roster, Pascal Siakam, one of the most versatile power forwards in the entire NBA. Once the Toronto Raptors decided to trade OG Anunoby, immediately we started to turn our eyes to Pascal Siakam. And the list of teams that could have traded for Pascal Siakam were infinite. Teams like the Dallas Mavericks and the Golden State Warriors declared in interest in Pascal Siakam. Siakam wasn't making it easy on the Toronto Raptors to trade him. As a matter of fact, according to Locked On NBA Pods, Pascal Siakam has even reportedly told teams that he will not commit to re-signing with any team that is not the Raptors and wants to test out free agency. I don't necessarily know how valid that information is, but it's not like that information is going to change much because if Pascal Siakam likes the team he gets traded to, then he'll be able to re-sign for significantly more money as opposed to just leaving in 
free agency. And the most prominent team that was interested in Siakam was without a doubt the Indiana Pacers, a team that has shocked the entire NBA this season. Tyrese Halliburton is in the midst of one of the most remarkable breakout seasons we have ever seen in NBA history. And when he's on the court, he is an absolute wizard with the basketball. He's been shooting a scalding 40% from three, averaging 12.5 assists per game to go with 23.6 points per game. And out of the last five games that Tyrese Halliburton has played, the Indiana Pacers only lost one of them to the Boston Celtics. So the vision was clear. The Indiana Pacers understood that with the roster that they currently have constructed, they're pretty close to contention. They just need to get someone that can make things easy on their almost 24 year old star who hasn't even hit his prime yet. So they immediately locked on to Pascal Siakam. And late on Tuesday night, we got a report from Sham Sharanya and Sam Amick that literally caused me to run out of my gym immediately mid-workout. I was actually considering getting a massage. My glute was killing me. But the moment I saw this report, I left immediately because it seemed like this was about to go down. The Toronto Raptors and the Indiana Pacers were engaged in Pascal Siakam trade talks involving Bruce Brown Jr. and draft picks. Remember what I said in the beginning of the video, January 15th has passed, so now we could expect some trade talks to start ramping up. And according to this report from Shams and Sam Amick, the Toronto Raptors and Indiana Pacers are actively engaged in trade talks centered around two-time All-Star forward Pascal Siakam that would send them to Indiana for a package that includes Bruce Brown Jr., other salaries, and three first-round draft picks, league sources tell The Athletic. Now, the other salaries that I'm predicting in this particular case might potentially be Buddy Heald. We got a report from Eric Pincus earlier on today saying that a likely trade package for Pascal Siakam could be Bruce Brown, Buddy Heald, and a first round pick. The bait offered is believed to be Buddy Heald, Bruce Brown, and one of Indiana's two first round picks in the 2024 NBA draft. It has its own and another that is likely via the OKC Thunder or the LA Clippers. Shams continues to say that the Raptors have been engaged in discussions with several teams on a potential Siakam deal, but conversations with the Pacers have gained steam in recent days, those sources say. Sources briefed on the talks between the two teams say that there have been several back and forth proposals made. While the two sides have been described as being far along in the process, according to those sources, they have yet to finalize or agree to a deal. Now bear in mind, Shams may have put this out to squeeze the Sacramento Kings a little bit, who ironically are also suitors for Pascal Siakam, a team that made a huge blockbuster trade with the Indiana Pacers that included Demodis Bonus and Tyrese Halliburton a few trade deadlines ago, saying the Kings have been among other suitors for Siakam, but decided to pull out of the conversation in recent weeks, league sources say. Siakam is also known to be against the potential prospect of re-signing in Sacramento, making a Kings deal even more problematic. The Warriors and Mavericks have expressed exploratory interest in Siakam as well, according to league sources. So I stayed up and stayed up and stayed up just in case we got pretty much what happened with the James Harden trade to the Los Angeles Clippers, where that was announced at 4 a.m. Eastern time. I still remember that night like it was yesterday. And eventually, the news would drop on Wednesday afternoon. According to Adrian Wojnarowski, breaking! The Indiana Pacers are finalizing a trade to acquire all-star forward Pascal Siakam in a deal that will send Bruce Brown, Jordan Nwora, and three first round picks to the Toronto Raptors. Now, what we didn't know originally from the Shams report is that New Orleans will be involved in this trade as well. And in this case, New Orleans will be sending Kyra Lewis to the Toronto Raptors. So as a result of this trade, Indiana sends two first round picks to the Toronto Raptors, while New Orleans sends a second round pick to Indiana. I gotta admit, I was fairly critical of the Toronto Raptors for holding on to their assets for way too long. Earlier in the video, I criticized them for OG on Anobi, and I felt like they were on the cusp of doing that once again with Pascal Siakam. Considering the fact that Pascal Siakam is a free agent this offseason, the Toronto Raptors didn't have a lot of leverage here. So this is causing a lot of people to say that the Toronto Raptors fleeced the Indiana Pacers because Indiana is sending two 2024 first rounders 
and a 2026 first rounder to the Toronto Raptors, while New Orleans sends a second round pick to Indiana. Now, the 2024 first round picks will be Indiana's own and the worst of the Utah slash Houston slash Clippers slash OKC pick. But the Pacers are going to be sending their own 2026 first rounder in this deal. And this is a remarkable get for a player that is about to hit free agency in the offseason. But that's not to say that the Indiana Pacers made a bad trade. If the Indiana Pacers are in a position where Pascal Siakam somehow, some way, ruins their entire team, destroys their momentum, makes them a worse team, which I don't think is going to happen, then they could go back to the drawing board in 2025 and they have all of their picks in 2027. It's not like you're crippling your future for this trade. I think it's actually a very intelligent trade by the Indiana Pacers because they currently have a lot of momentum in the Eastern Conference and it's not out of the realm of possibility to see this team finish within the top three in the Eastern Conference. They clearly have an incredible young star in Tyrese Halliburton and now you get some time to see whether or not he can make it work with one of the most versatile forwards in the entire NBA. In terms of whether or not Pascal Siakam plans on re-signing with the Indiana Pacers, according to Woj, Pascal Siakam is excited about the deal to the Pacers and is expected to be eager to work out a new contract with the franchise this summer, sources tell ESPN. Siakam can be a free agent in July. You know how it works. Indiana could probably offer him the most money. He's in a scenario where he could contend in a great spot with one of the best young point guards in the NBA. I don't see why he would leave, personally, unless if he can't stand Rick Carlisle. We've seen crazy stuff before. At the end of the day, I give the Indiana Pacers an A. At the very worst, you give up some late first round picks for Pascal Siakam. All the picks that you're trading are from teams that are expected to be in the playoffs this year. It's not the end of the world. And that's probably why the Toronto Raptors were okay with it. It sounds sexy to say, oh, they got three first round picks. But well, these are three first round picks that are probably going to be in the 22nd to like 30 range in the NBA draft. And that's not a bad thing because you could have lost Pascal Siakam for nothing. So as a result, I'm going to give the Toronto Raptors a B minus for this trade. The reason why it's not an A is because they should have moved on from Pascal Siakam a year sooner. They probably could have gotten a lot more for him and they may have waited a little bit too long, but that's still not a bad grade. At the same time, I give the Indiana Pacers an A. They didn't give up Benedict Matherin. They didn't need to give up Buddy Heald. The core of their franchise is still there. They traded a player that they signed to a contract this past summer, in addition to Jordan Nuora. I mean, I don't think this is an overpay. Those first round picks, in my opinion, aren't going to be too valuable. And I think this could be the move that puts them in a scenario to compete as soon as this year. I'm excited to see how this team performs with Pascal Siakam, and it should be interesting to see how the Toronto Raptors continue their rebuild. Let me know in the comment section down below what your grade for this trade is, and aside from that, I'm your boy Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.